The 1660 Ti is one of the last GTX GPUs ever released by Nvidia. But as time's gone on, it's mainly been forgotten, thanks to being overshadowed completely by the popularity of the GTX 1660 Super. But before I get into the video, let me know, do you have a GTX graphics card or an RTX GPU? Let me know in the comments down below. Launching back in February of 2019, the GTX 1660 Ti was touted to be a 1080p gaming king. And this is thanks to its 1536 CUDA cores and 6GB of GDDR6 memory running through a 192-bit bus. Albeit, the GDDR6 memory on this is slightly slower than the RTX GPUs of the time. There was also a lot of hype around these GPUs back in 2019, thanks to the new at the time Turing NVENC encoder. This made the 1660 non-TI and this model very sought after amongst the streaming community. That's because the NVENC encoder that these were equipped with allowed for a much nicer image when compared to the previous Pascal encoder. I said encoder a lot there, didn't I? This Zotac twin fan model is a relatively basic model, if I'm honest, there's nothing too flashy about it. It's got no RGB, no backplate, but ultimately it gets the job done. And it's absolutely minuscule when you compare it to the GPUs of today, which I kind of miss these little ITX GPUs. I'm not going to lie to you because this thing, if you look, is just absolutely tiny. It's, it's not big at all. It's barely longer than the PCIe slot, so yeah. On the back, you will find a very familiar layout with one HDMI 2.0 connector and three DisplayPort 1.4a connectors here. So all of your monitor's connectivity is covered with this thing. The spec sheet with this Zotac model states that it will boost up to 1,770 megahertz but in my testing, it boosted up to just south of 1900 MHz, so GPU boost is doing its job here. And it's almost as if these boost metrics on advertising pages for graphics cards are completely useless. And to power this up, NVIDIA recommend at least a 300 watt power supply and one 8-pin PCIe power cable. And that is because it only has a minuscule 120 watt TDP. With all the specs out of the way, let's get into some testing. All testing today is done at 1080p with no FSR scaling being used at all. So if you did decide to enable this, you might get a few frames in some of the games listed today. The test bench system that I'm using today is my Ryzen 5 5600G test bench system, which has the Ryzen 5 5600G, 16 gigabytes of 3600 MHz CL17 DDR4 running in dual channel, a one terabyte Sabrent PCIe Gen 3 NVMe SSD, and an Asus Strix B550-F gaming. Before testing today, I did clean this GTX 1660 Ti in a video which will be up here or here, where I went through cleaning the graphics card. But either way, the 1660 Ti is gonna be performing at its best today. First up is Unigen Superposition, and here on the 1080p medium preset, the 1660 Ti scored 11,152, which is a very respectable score and it's about 10 to 15 percent over what the 1660 non-ti scored a few months back starting off the games with modern warfare 2 and here on the basic preset which is what i recommend for anyone playing this game in a multiplayer setting at least but i also enabled the high textures as the six gigabytes of vram is plenty for that at 1080p here the 1660 ti got 109 fps on average with 65 fps for the one percent low this was taken in the built-in benchmark so if you've got a 144 hertz panel maybe drop it to the minimum and as long as you've got a decent cpu to keep up with the frames you should be getting around 144 if you drop it to the minimum preset Cyberpunk, as we all know, is a pretty beefy game and here on the GTX 1660 Ti with the medium preset enabled and high textures, it worked just fine, getting 64 FPS for the average and a 1% low of 48 FPS. The game did feel pretty smooth if I'm honest, there was no issues like stutters or anything like that and the 6GB of VRAM is plenty for the high textures so there were no issues there either. These are the settings I would recommend for Cyberpunk. Fortnite is a game that I've been playing a lot recently and it's still pretty popular as well so why not test it today. Here I set it to the DirectX 12 API and I set the settings to low as the 1660 Ti is a pretty modern GPU, DX12 will do just fine. And as it has 16GB of VRAM as well, high textures were also a good option 
as I set the rest of the settings to low. While landing at Slappy Shores, the 1660 Ti got 251 FPS on average with a 1% low of 153. This is incredible performance in Fortnite and even if you had a 240Hz 1080p monitor, these settings are perfect for that. You don't need a performance API here at all. So if you're a Fortnite streamer, this graphics card could be a very good option for you. Atomic Heart looks great even at lower quality settings such as the medium preset. And with this preset enabled, the 1660 Ti does a very good job with 99 and 81 FPS for both the average and the 1% low respectively. This was taken on the first mission and performance here was just simply great. You'll be having a great gaming experience playing Atomic Heart with these settings. With pretty much every GPU benchmarking video, GTA 5 is always being tested and that is no different from today. With the very high settings and 2 times MSAA, GTA 5 looks pretty good and the 1660 Ti achieved with these settings 112 FPS on average and 82 FPS for the 1% low. GTA is just incredibly easy to run on anything released in the past 5 years at least so yeah you've got no issues if you're playing games like 5M and stuff like that you won't have any problems. Rainbow Six Siege is always going to perform well on hardware like this and even on the medium preset the 1660 Ti got 273 fps on average with 170 for the one percent low here the 5600g was doing a lot of work and it was slightly holding it back ever so slightly not by a large margin at all so maybe you might get high performance if you had something like a 5800x 3d but I don't know why you'd be running one of them CPUs with a GPU like this. But overall though, Siege doesn't look bad on the medium preset and this performance is perfectly fine for a 240Hz monitor. Horizon Zero Dawn is up next and on the favour quality preset which is slightly higher than the original slash medium, the 1660Ti got 85fps on average with a 1% low of 62. The game looks pretty good here I'm not going to lie and performance is great as well so if you've got horizon zero dawn and you want to play on a 1660 ti you'll be having a great gaming experience with the favor quality settings f122 is probably not the best optimized game that codemasters has ever made but regardless here it performed great because setting it to the medium preset netted 156 fps on average with 101 FPS for the 1% low. So yet again, a 1660 Ti is perfectly fine for F1. So if you like to stream F1, this graphics card is a perfect match for you. I've never tested Battlefield 2042 here on the channel before and I've started playing it recently. So I thought, why not test it as it's the newest one and it's a very hard game to run. But regardless, on the low preset, which actually doesn't look that much worse than the high preset I've noticed because the settings don't scale very well on this game but it got 107 fps on average with 62 fps for the 1% low it was nice and smooth there were a few stutters but this could have been down to caching or something along those lines so it's not that bad but the main thing is it didn't take away from the gaming experience at all so yeah Battlefield 2042 is totally playable on this configuration God of War 2018 always does run slightly worse than Horizon Zero Dawn, but that's okay because setting it to the original preset here, which is essentially medium, the GTX 1660 Ti got 83 FPS on average with 67 FPS for the 1% low. Gameplay was nice and smooth, there were no hitches really to speak of, and you can have a great gaming experience here, as the original preset still looks pretty good at 1080p. Last game up today is Forza Horizon 5. This Microsoft title does look amazing on the high preset and it also performs great too with 97 FPS on average and 80 FPS for that 1% low. This was taken from the in-game benchmark which is basically as laggy as the game gets because it's in the main city for the most part. So if you're driving around in fields or you're in races, I think you'd be getting more FPS than this as well. So. Yeah, the 1660 Ti is not bad at all in Forza Horizon 5. Taking a look at the 11 game performance overview and we can see that the 1660 Ti has performed pretty well overall, especially in esports games. Games like Fortnite and Rainbow Six Siege will run totally fine on a 1660 Ti. 
and if you like to stream them games, this graphics card would be a very good one for you. As usual in these benchmarking videos, Cyberpunk did perform not too great, it was one of the worst performing ones if I'm honest, but on the medium preset with high textures, getting over 60 FPS is perfectly fine, so there isn't that much of an issue to be had. And if you were to enable FSR as well, you might be able to get away with higher quality settings as well. With the six gigabytes of video memory that comes with the 1660 Ti, are its days numbered in 2023? And I'd have to say, if you don't really care about the newer games, no, definitely not, as this thing is still going to be receiving driver support for a good while yet. And if you lower the quality settings in some of the newer games, especially the textures, you should be fine. If you'd like to play spaghetti code messes like The Last of Us, an 8GB card is recommended for 1080p, which I think is absolutely absurd, but that's just the way things are these days. So if you wanted to play newer games like that, I'd have to recommend graphics cards like the RTX 3060, which has 12GB of video memory, or maybe something even like the RX 6600 from AMD, which has 8 gigabytes of video memory. So if you're looking for a very cheap graphics card as this one only cost me just over £100 here in the UK for a 1660 Ti, I paid 250 for one of these brand new four years ago now so they have definitely come down in price albeit that one was new and this one was used but yeah. It plays pretty much everything totally fine even newer games like Atomic Heart and Cyberpunk they run totally fine and as always, if you're into esports games like Fortnite, Rainbow Six Siege, Counter-Strike Go, even games like Forza Horizon 5 perform pretty well on this thing, the 1660 Ti is more than enough, if I'm honest. Just be aware, with some used graphics cards, you do have to clean them up a bit to get them performing well, like this one, but it's about 20 minutes of work, more than double that if you record it, like I did in that video. But it doesn't take a lot of time, and you get a good deal at the end of the day and who doesn't like a good deal so when it comes to the 1660 ti i'll probably be flipping it in a budget 1080p sort of streaming gaming pc with maybe something like a ryzen 5 3600 maybe that's a great pairing for this gpu so i think i'll be making that video in the very near future maybe a couple of months from now but yeah this will be a great graphics card for that so if you can't wait for that video Stay subscribed, turn on that notification bell to get notified when that comes out and leave a like on this video if you like it. So I'm going to be leaving this one here, so yeah, I'll catch you in the next one.